name is Erica Steiner. I am the coordinator for the DOD MWR Summer Reading Program. And this presentation is about uh, some best practices for planning a program. So this year's program for summer reading uh, theme is Reading Colors Your World. So there's lots of ways to interpret that and use that in a variety of uh, different activities and program themes for this year. Looking back, uh, last year with the COVID situation, we had a 34% decrease in enrollments, and that's a different number from people that actually read compared to people that actually just joined the program. So we were down about a third last year. This year, with COVID being maybe a, a bit better in some locations, it might be higher than this, but I wouldn't expect it to be much higher than, than this uh, last year. And similarly, the minutes were about a third less for reading which is maybe a little bit more surprising since people at home, apparently they didn't have extra time for reading and didn't spend all the time reading and then push that number up. So we'll hope that there's more readers this uh, coming year. So we did have an overall decrease in variance past years. However, this is only one number, and for your own programs, there's no reason to focus just on just getting more people into your program. It's a great measurement, of course, to get more people involved, but as a best practice, it's good to pick something that is meaningful for your community and for your staff that everybody can get excited about as a goal or goals, depending on what you're doing this summer, uh, for the uh, program. So that could be focusing on getting a particular population group, like maybe single sailors, uh, soldiers, German, Marines involved instead of just kids, since there's a lot of emphasis on kids. Or it could be you want to get everybody uh, writing reviews about books and showing how much they love to read. Or, you know, just anything that is meaningful for you and your staff and your community that you can really get excited about and use as a measurable thing that you can uh, grow on from year to year. Or maybe even just for the summer for a goal. But it does need to be measurable so you're able to see the success and celebrate that success. There are some requirements, though, for summer reading. Uh, they haven't changed. This is the same as past years. You need to hold the program between mid-May to mid-September. You're welcome to hold other programs throughout the year, but for the one funded by the, the uh, OSD, it needs to be held from mid-May to mid-September. You need to count minutes and not books. The reason we do that is so that we're encouraging readers at all levels, and they aren't just picking a book because it's the shortest, but they're picking maybe something that's more interesting and meaningful for them to read. It has to be open to all ages, and that includes especially active duty. We'd love to see more sailors, marines, airmen, soldiers participate. And you have to use the summer reading program theme. Everybody I checked all the tracking today. Almost everybody should have their disc with the program graphics. Yeah, as well as the uh, program guide. This year's guide includes a chapter that is specifically about the military program for uh, running on the base. And it does include a timeline. There are a couple adjustments to the timeline for uh, scheduling the training sessions. So I sent out an email earlier. Please do check that email for the corrections to the timeline. But otherwise, everything else in the chapter is updated as of this time. Programs need to be held for a minimum of six weeks. You're more than welcome to run it even longer, though. And you have to allow your readers to use theme stack. The reason we do that is we found from that previous graphic where it showed uh, the steep incline in participation and minutes read. Well, that started when we started really enforcing using the online reading program system and theme stack especially. When readers are able to register on their own and log reading time on their own, especially using the app, we find that they get more involved and they're more active, not only in one program, but in future programs since they get to keep their uh, own account and keep while you're reading even outside of an account if they want to do that side of the I mean, outside of the program if they are receiving so.
So our current contract for summer reading does include marketing. So that's why we have the uh, marketing disc that everybody should have now to make your own marketing as well as the post free graphic that we provide. It is good to do your own marketing uh, as opposed to just relying on the posters that you could have ordered from the order form sent in around or what, to September of this past year. Uh, with your own custom marketing, you can provide a better message than just relying on what's on the disc. But the disc does give a good jumping off point, and now would be the time to start in on marketing. Uh, marketing departments get really busy, and they also get time to get a book branch. For the reading incentives, we put more emphasis on getting higher quality, i.e. more expensive incentives, but we also do provide the cheaper option. I don't really know if there's a best practice for this, but readers' taste also seem to be pretty mixed. But at the very least, the younger kids seem to be at least a little bit better with the cheaper options, and they like to have more prizes, whereas the teenagers and above would rather have a higher quality prize and maybe have less prizes. So it's possible when you're setting up your program that you have uh, different reading levels, or it could just be that uh, maybe there's only one prize for an adult or a teen at the end of a program, just depending on how much your budget was and what emphasis you see uh, for your own readers on quality versus quantity. There is the mascot, that's a popular prize for kids, although it is a more expensive prize, so it might be based on your budget that that's only something that they get if they complete the program. As well as the ever popular t shirts pulling uh, for achievement. Sorry, this is against the left one. And there's also now a trophy. Uh, we started having this last year. The trophy is to promote competitions. This started as more of an, an Air Force unit. Thing, that they would have competitions between the active duty units on the base. But it was a really good way to get them involved. It is hard to get adults, and especially active duty adults, involved. And having a, a competition between different organizations or departments or the active duty units on a base using this trophy that would be able to travel around and stay in the trophy case, whatever unit that's wanted for that year, it's a good way to maybe get an active uh, duty population or a civilian population to join the program. And then you've also included more things in supplies so that you have more uh, decorations, things like a, a backdrop to do photos in front of, which would still work, I think, with social distancing uh, requirements and families would be able to stand and sit together. It's something you could always have out as an asynchronous kind of a program to pull people in. And other decorating items just to keep things uh, interesting inside the library and more attractive to the program. The activity kits, they might not be as useful depending on exactly where you're at in the COVID uh, situation, whether or not you're able to have in-person programs, but it might also be something that you could use as a virtual program if you could do streaming programs at the location. The program supplies should be coming soon. Uh, if they should be sent uh, sometime this month, so at least by March you should be getting your program supplies and everything that was ordered back in September. The McNaughton Road Art YA and Kids books uh, are also well funded to throughout the year, really. So you can order your uh, program your program books now, and that way you'll have them inside for sure. I sent out in the previous email a bibliography, so that's some good suggested titles to order from McNaughton. We've also had a lot of people asking for points, and all the points, as well as the location, almost all the points have been transferred into account to request them. Also, another uh, option for getting more points around June, in time for the school year. But right now is a good time to be ordering books uh, in preparation for the program for story time, as well as to keep on display and to promote for your readers. We'll continue to have the DOD virtual summer reading program uh, as in last year. We're going to keep it open to anybody. They could be part of both an installation program as well as this DOD virtual SRP.inkstack.org site. But if a reader wanted to be part of the DOD virtual program, they would have to have a separate account from what they have with your installation program. They're welcome to do that. Uh, if you're having an installation program, you can just also ignore the DOD program if for some reason you're not able to have 
an installation program when it gets close to the date. You can send them to the DOD program and keep your supplies for later if something happens and you're not able to have a program for some reason in summer. And same as last year, we're, we'll continue doing uh, gift cards that are sent by email to winners each week. And it's a random drawing as well as a drawing at the end uh, you know, award at the end for the top readers. So one main uh, focus on summer reading, of course, is literacy and why reading is important. Literacy is the ability to use printed and written information to function in society, to achieve one's goals, and to develop one's knowledge and potential. That's from ALA. Literacy ability is a continuum from the basic understanding of text to the ability to locate and integrate information of all uh, types and from different sources. Libraries provide a unique set of resources, uh, not only a location, but normally a space, not your space is available to patrons, but uh, hopefully will be in the future, and then print and digital information as well as dedicated and knowledgeable staff. Libraries can be an anchor in their community, valuing the quality of access to resources, community integration, and facilitating lifelong learning. So one key aspect of literacy, it's not just books. There's a tendency for people to have an old-fashioned view of libraries as these book warehouses that are quiet and they're always told to shush, etc. Well, literacy is about more than just books, just like libraries are about more than just books. So we count minutes instead of books, so that allows readers to develop their literacy skills through whatever reading media they prefer. You can set different rules for your own library, of course, but in general, um, there is the option of having, giving readers the option to read whatever they like, whether it's a website, to a magazine, or listening to an audiobook, etc. So there are different aspects of literacy. Digital literacy is the ability to use information and communication technologies to find, evaluate, create, and communicate information, requiring both cognitive and technical skills. Information literacy, which is the ability to recognize when information is needed and to locate, evaluate, and use it effectively. So that's a critical thinking. Financial literacy, this one is really important, I think, uh, to have an understanding of basic financial principles and to be an informed consumer and manage one's finances. Health literacy, which is also important, especially these days. Uh, skills for managing one's health and well being, including making effective decisions and partnering with healthcare providers to live a full and productive life. And media literacy, to be an informed, critical understanding of mass media, including the ability to evaluate sources and synthesize information. In other words, not just listening to what's on TV and taking it as gospel. All these aspects of literacy could be um, something that you take as a program goal to focus on, or you could focus on books and reading in general. In early literacy, that's uh, childhood, and it does very important because it forms the basis for all later success in life. Children who are read to at least three times a week are twice as likely to recognize all letters and understand words and context. And they form positive experiences with their parents with reading to their children and helps them develop a lifelong love of reading. For students, the equivalent of one month of learning is lost over summer vacation, which is how we ended up originally getting funding for the summer reading program, even though we've now expanded the vision to include all, of, um, all people of all ages. For students, two months of reading are lost over the summer, and who knows how many more months are being lost right now with the disruption to regular schooling with COVID. It takes up to two months to relearn old material when school restarts. And reading four to five books over the summer has a positive impact that is comparable to having summer school. And for adults, 11 million adults are not literate in English. 36 million adults cannot read, write, or do basic math above the third grade level. I suppose with the military community, we have a higher rate of literacy than in the general population, but they do have to uh, meet certain requirements to even become uh, active duty mem service members and have positions as civilians. But there are maybe family members and others uh, who work on base that fall into these 
uh, data points and could definitely benefit from being part of a summer reading program and developing further literacy skills. Higher literacy proficiency level is associated with a better job earnings, whereas incarceration and poverty are associated with low literacy levels. So reading is important for military career advancement, and that includes performing well on the ASVAB, obstacle exams, and understanding technical writing. And if anybody has ever read uh, a lot of policies and other issuances from the DOD and the services, yeah, there's a lot of technical writing, and if someone wants to have a, uh, a long career in the military, they will need to be able to understand and possibly at some point be able to produce that level of technical writing. So those are all just points to keep in mind when you're going out and talking to people in your community about why they should be part of summer reading or why libraries should be summer reading. There might be some points there that you might consider for uh, goals to help develop your program. So for planning, uh, given the COVID situation, you might plan for in-person activities, but still expect to have to incorporate social distancing and other COVID considerations, uh, annotation, maybe having quarantine materials, things like that. It is probably still a good idea to plan for virtual or at-home activities as a backup to in-person activities if, if, if something happens and suddenly have another spike in COVID. If your installation or facility is forced to close, you can always have the, your readers join the DOD virtual summer reading program and hold on to your supplies in the hopes that all the reader will be better. We didn't use the numbers from uh, fiscal year 20 in our considerations for funding, and we're not going to use uh, FY21 either, just because I don't expect it to be back to normal by any means this year. Uh, but that said, if we did have to have an unusually high number of participants this summer, we will up your budget for next year. But if you have a lower number than normal this year, don't worry, we won't count that. So for setup, keep it simple. This is good advice whether your program ends up being virtual or in person. If you can keep it down to a simple one sentence kind of message, might be a bit of a run on sentence, maybe a couple sentences, but a very simple message that isn't going to require your staff to have a five page long instruction page to follow and it isn't going to require having five minute conversations with your patrons to explain how to be part of the program, that's best, if you can make it short and easy. So that means also allowing patrons to register and log their reading on their own, so that if they don't feel comfortable coming to a library yet, they would uh, be able to log their reading time on their own, and maybe do a curbside pickup for a time, if that's the more comfortable. So in Beanstack, there is an option to customize your welcome message, so you can fit your program. It's under the setup options, so definitely do that. Customize your message as well as make sure that your email for the contact us email is set to the right, the right person for whoever's going to be handling, handling the customer contact. You can offer more badges. Beanstack found that people, uh, locations that had more badges, even if there wasn't actually a prize, or reading to that level, more readers would read and read uh, for more minutes. If there was a badge to earn, it didn't even matter if they got a prize or not. So feel free to add more badges. The snack has the option to add unlimited, basically, number of badges. Though they might not all look exactly like a program. There's lots of good options there are to set up. You just have to change the reading level intervals. So you might set it to be two hours instead of the default template is three hours. It's also a good idea to add on some badges for the super readers, the ones that read like 5,000 minutes over the summer, and give them a, a big goal to aim for, but make sure that it's not a requirement for completing the program, or else the normal readers will be discouraged by not being able to uh, complete the program. I tend to, when setting up the DOD site, add the super reader badge at something really generic like uh, I'm number one star image or something like that that looks totally separate from the other one just so people will understand that this is the bonus badge and, and not a required badge and I add that into the text at the top so 
so that readers aren't discouraged when they don't get to the 5,000 level, while the readers that will get to it have something to aim for. And update the prizes with the pickup instructions, especially if you end up having a virtual program and you're not going to be able to have people come inside the library, maybe you're going to do curbside pickup hours, or you're only going to have people pick up their prizes on a certain day to try and limit uh, contact, something like that, be sure to update the price pickup instructions in the stack, as well as uh, make sure that they're part of marketing. So planning. Staff responsibility is uh, the key aspect of planning. Uh, it's good to start now for these planning. Make sure that everybody is assigned their roles, understands what's expected of them, who will be responsible for those contact us emails and other outreach to the community, who does the social media posts, if you can do social media posts, or works with the marketing department if there's only ones to do social media posts, uh, the who, when, and how, how prizes will be given out by staff, and who will manage any of the activities like streaming a story time or running a book club, and if they need help, who's going to need the helpers or will you have volunteers? So for staff training, you definitely want to do staff training, even if it's just a short part of a, an already pre-established meeting day that you have for staff once a month or something. But you definitely need to do staff training, have the staff attend or watch a recording of the front desk the staff, staff training that we're going to be offering later in April. There's also uh, previous versions of that from last previous years in the Army YouTube channel if they want to watch it now. You can also record your own training. If you don't have access to a virtual application like Adobe, you can always use something like PowerPoint, which allows you to uh, do a screen capture and then insert it in as a video file. Uh, that does make a very large file, though, so you can share it with your staff if you don't have the option of putting it someplace like YouTube, whatever's approved for the location of your service. Uh, you can send it through the what's called the DOD SAFE, which is a file transfer service that the uh, Department of Defense uses and is therefore definitely approved for you to use. You can also create a program guide for your staff to walk them through the summer, including things like the timeline and how to enterprise all the things that they'll have to use, maybe uh, a short message that they could do the elevator speech, basically, of when somebody walks up to the desk, you will tell the person this message to try and get them to join the program, things like that. They could go in a staff program guide as a reference. And, of course, you could always hold an in-person training as long as uh, your base is open during the COVID situation. So, for example, uh, training might start off by giving a good introduction to some reading, going through the theme, the program dates, uh, the program requirements that I talked about in slide six. Any activities that you have planned in coordination with some reading beings, so they could be virtual, in person, or asynchronous. So the plan date, target audience, uh, maybe the goal of the particular activity, if there's a learning goal, and what's expected from staff to be able to support that. And also being staff, going through the registration, having all the people, uh, how to use the Stack app, and how to use the for distributing prizes to readers. And other topics that might be uh, particular for your program, so you might do final awards, you might have more outreach plans, uh, maybe you're doing raffles, other things like that. So you start with uh, marketing as soon as possible. If you can do in-person outreach, I found that that's a really great way to get people signed up. And you definitely want to work with uh, whatever organizations on base um, are available, so that might be child development centers, youth centers, teen centers. But definitely the school liaison from DODIA and other MWR, SSS, MCCS facilities and programs, dining facilities that they let you put up posters or flyers or hang out in person to do a decoration table to register people. Commissaries and exchange stores, DODIA schools, though that might be more overseas and the USO if they're available, and other local um, organizations that might be on base, of course, but that's just a list to get started. If any of those places allow for in-person outreach, uh, and you can do it with the social distancing and other requirements that your location might be following, of course, you can go to all of those places. Uh, there might also be spouse associations that allow you to appear at one of the meetings, or maybe the installation, all hands-free. 
or maybe an MWR, MCCS, Texas staff meeting or department meeting that's a, a larger part of the installation at hand. Virtually, uh, keep in mind that attention spans, especially virtual attention spans, and I think at this point, virtual attention spans are even shorter than they were before. People are getting a little bit tired of perhaps of virtual, or at least uh, the digital library for the Navy has been seeing fewer people using it. I think they got a little bit tired of virtual. So keep in mind, attention spans are short. So can you send an email to your library patrons to invite them to join the program if you have access to a patron list, maybe through your ILS or through something else that you've had people sign up for, maybe through your Beanstack if you are at a location that chose to leave your accounts, which most people did have their accounts, and you can use a report in Beanstack to pull up those emails and send an email to everybody. Just make sure that you're doing that, that it's a, um, that you're BCCing and, and not sending it just to people so that the email addresses are hidden. And of course there's social media, uh, not everybody has their own Facebook page and other kinds of Instagram or other social media, but you should work with your marketing department if we uh, are the ones that are controlling that. And definitely start early if you're working with marketing departments. The library website and OPAC, news outlets, it might be particular to your installation. If you're overseas, you might have radio such as the AFN. So planning virtual programs, uh, activities. It could be something that is an at-home activity that they do a curbside or a circulation desk pickup for an activity kit. It could be something that you post on your Facebook page or the website getting them instructions for things that they can probably have around the house and make it home. You can send readers to your registered program. Um, that's what I was talking about before with being that you need to get a recorded list of all your emails to invite them to join and send them uh, instructions for how to do some activity at home. And you can also post an event on your Beanstack site and provide them with instructions on how to follow um, be part of this activity or the instructions for the activity could be directly at uh, part of the event's description. The event posting options for Beanstack are a bit limited. Uh, the event will appear on the landing page and you can change exactly where they show up on the landing page but it wouldn't be something that people would see once they're actually signed in so it's probably better to use the event posting as a supplemental way to do outreach and not as your main way to try and get people to do an at home activity or uh, outreach for any other activities you can also set up activity badges and those are just under the uh, Reading badges if you're in the Beanstack setup. You can make as many badges as you want. You can require multiple activities to be uh, required to earn a badge. There are default activities set up with the template. Most of them are focused on things in the digital library to introduce uh, customers to the digital library and to maybe try something new in the digital library. And there's three types of activities in Beanstack. There's a general activity, which you could include a link. Once completed, the patron just uh, self-verifies that they have completed it. There's the activity code. Uh, you can use the patron has to enter in the uh, data. It doesn't have to be capitalized or, or lowercase. Don't care about that. But it does have to be the exact letters or numbers otherwise. So, for example, I use the activity code to set up a quiz for winter reading program about various winter holidays from around the world. And it holds the uh, information from a reference book that was in one of our digital library collections. And it told people where to look in the reference book to find the answer. So they would take, go there and then come back and they would enter in the answer. And uh, that way they could earn this activity as part of an activity code setup. And then there are text box challenge activities. Uh, and those are basically a free text box. They can enter in whatever they want which can also be a good way to uh, get input from your readers. Like you might ask, what's your favorite book? Or when's your favorite time to come to the library? Get maybe some sort of survey or sort of feedback from that as well. It's using it as an activity match. So 
when you're setting up your bean stack, there are, this is just a few reminders that we'll go over in the admin training later, but all of the sites do have the template set up now. So if you want to go in and start looking around, um, this might be the time to do it only because they're going to be changing the admin layout. So if you've gotten used to the way that it looks now, it's going to look, I guess, different. I don't know exactly how different, but it's going to look different by the time we get to about March, April. So if you like the way that it looks now, it might be worth going in and making changes now. Uh, VSAC likes to call them challenges instead of programs. Now, you can use whichever terminology you prefer. But when you are setting up a program, make sure that your program is published. Otherwise, people won't be able to join it. You can keep making changes to the program after that, but that way you're at least able to do a pre-registration. Your publishing option is in the top right-hand corner when you're uh, setting up a program. And you also want to make sure that registration is turned on when logging reading is enabled, and that's in the settings. So there's been a problem that seems more recently, at least on some baby computers, that the, um, the computer is blocking the options in the settings. It doesn't show the checkboxes to be able to turn on registration and logging. So if you do go into the site and it seems like buttons are missing that should be there, um, please tell me. I'm trying to get an idea of how widespread our problem is so that I can try and figure out who to even ask to fix it. It seems to be just on the military network computers though. So if you have another patron computer and it seems like some of the admin functions on your website are, are missing or just not working, you have the option to use a customer commercial network computer, um, that would be the first thing I would try. But do tell me so I can try and get a sense of how big a problem that is. Whatever changes you're making in Beanstack, though, one thing you cannot do is change the age or add a uh, grade level other personal information as a requirement for registration. Uh, this system is just not approved for that kind of information. So another good thing to do is to add five to two badges so that people know what they're uh, aiming for. So if it takes uh, 1,800 minutes to earn a t-shirt, then they can see that they're going to earn the t-shirt at the end, and that could be a really good uh, way to encourage them to keep participating. Whereas never knowing what they're going to earn when it could be a little more discouraging, especially these days when people may not feel comfortable physically coming into a library and seeing uh, maybe a display that you might have up of prizes or things like that. Maybe they're not going to have as many visits this summer as they would have in past years, so they're going to rely more on what it says in these decks to know what's going on and what goals that they want to aim for. And Beanstack does have a lot of other options. If you're looking to have people really engage in your program, you might add more of these features like the prize drawings, if you want to complete prize drawings, or if you want to set up um, the, a gift basket and if they read so many minutes they get a ticket for them to the gift basket drawing and other ways to just get people engaged and excited. What might be more exciting for your community versus our normal uh, template, which is just a very simple default template. There's lots more options you can set up that might be more engaging. You might create uh, a book list and customize the back pages. I don't know if a lot of people look at the back pages, but it might be a good thing to do if you are using that as another way to do outreach and provide information to your customers. Otherwise, the back button is just a small thing at the bottom of the page that doesn't get noticed too much. So definitely put it lower on the priority list. I do really encourage adding more badges, since that is a good way to get people uh, more excited about reading if they keep getting more of this virtual feedback, they keep getting another badge earned, um, that can be really encouraging. Beanstack provides lots of training and other uh, program ideas and more, so I really encourage people to join the Beanstack email distro. They come out with an email, I'd say, about every three-ish weeks or so. Readers can log their reading time in the Beanstack app. Uh, one downside with the app is if they are part of most of the programs, then they can only actively be logging their time in one program at a time, though. So if they're part of your program, make sure that they are logging in under the username and profile for your location. There's also a timer on there for counting units. There's not a plan to have a staff side app, but 
the SciCast found that readers will participate more if they're using the app versus the website. So it might be a really good idea to get people using the app and uh, signed up that way. I'll be holding some more trainings. I'll be repeating this training on the 23rd. And then there'll be some admin trainings in March, the front desk staff trainings in April. And in May, this is sort of a catch-all, but if anybody has questions by that point in the year, they're welcome to come in or if they want to see something demoed at the stack, et cetera, I'm going to have some open question and answer sessions for May. This uh, training will be posted on the Army Library YouTube channel at some point. Sometimes it takes a bit of time for the person that administers the Adobe site to uh, work full for the training or more informing. If you've gotten your study guide, sorry, your resource guide, please do tell me if you haven't already. And once you get all of your supplies, make sure that you're inventorying them as soon as possible. This is definitely the best practice. Inventory your stuff as soon as possible because it does take a while to get replacements, uh, especially with COVID not being quite as bad as, as a disruptive uh, shipping this year, but still disruptive to shipping. So you want to be able to be able to get replacements as soon as possible for anything that might be missing the program. So inventory as soon as you get stuff, and tell me if you're missing anything, and we'll coordinate with the warehouse to send more. And when you're taking photos, please make sure that they're high-resolution photos. So that means at least the 300 DPI, which generally means not using your phone. But it really is good to have photos to help us continue to sell this program to our funders at OSD and services. And just looking ahead, next year's theme in 2022 is Read Beyond the Beaten Path. And it's all about camping, adventure, and skill development. So start thinking about that now, even while you're planning for it this summer. All right, any questions? I'll see if I can turn on the audio. And you can also put it in questions in the chat box. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you being part of this training. I hope it was helpful.